evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions in Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Pacer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Perfect Stitch Viewer, My Quilt Planner, Word Art and Stitches. Tonight's webinar features our Perfect Embroidery Pro. Can you do a split? continuously. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. Dory N, Manager of the Technical Support Department, Nancy R, Chris L, and I would like to reintroduce you to our longtime family member, Catherine Artinis. Catherine is the author of several books and many articles in designs and machine embroidery and loves to play in the dirt and with Perfect Embroidery Pro. So with no further ado, split away, Catherine. Thank you, Dory. No matter what size hoops we have, we always seem to want bigger and bigger. Now we really are appreciative to the designers and creators of our machines and hoops, but we always seem to want more. That's why we need to give a huge thank you to the designers designers and programmers of Inspiration Software, they have given us many tools to allow us to create the way we want. And have you noticed the consistency in all of the programs? Whether you're in Perfect Embroidery Pro, Word Art and Stitches, or My Quilt Embellisher, the language is all the same. 3D is always 3D, complex fill is always complex fill. It just makes learning so much easier. You feel more confident when you buy another Inspiration Software program, and you already feel at home when you open the screen. So let's take a look at the options we have to work with large designs, and then to add placement marks to help with the multiple hoopings required. We're going to begin with the coffee latte that's included in your software. We'll come over here to the Library tab, click on that, in the folder window, I'm going to scroll down until we find Perfect Embroidery Pro Free Designs, click on it, and down in the display window, I see some of those, but I'm going to do a right click and choose Show Contents. This brings me into my folder holding all of those free designs. Right up here at the top, you can see the full path that's followed from the C hard drive to Dime, to Designs, to Perfect Embroidery Pro. Also, remember that the reason I'm seeing all of my designs here as images is because I have Perfect Stitch Viewer. All right, let's go get our coffee. So we'll click down once, and here's our coffee right in the middle of the screen. I'll double-click it to bring it to screen, and as we look at it, we see here at the top that it is about 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. Because tonight is about split designs, what we're going to do is size this coffee up a little larger so it is outside of our 4x4 four four hoop. We'll pretend that's the one we have to work with. I'll come down here and click on Sequence. I'm going to choose All Items and come up here to Group, just in case I want to move that around. And then I'll come over here to Properties, Transform. I'm going to change the height of this cup to be 4.5, so it's just outside our 4x4 four four hoop. Come over here to Zoom, double-click it to set it to screen, and then let's bring up our 4x4 four four hoop so we can see where it would fit. Our 4x4 four four is actually our 100x100. 100 100. I own Baby Lock Machine, so this is the uh, one that I will be using. I'll go ahead and do an OK there. And you can see that it's just outside our 4x4 four four hoop, so we will need to split this design. I'll come over and turn the hoop off. And the button that we're going to play with tonight, the tool that is important for us, is this split design tool right up here. I'll go ahead and click it, and it brings us into a screen whereby you see some red marks going on and some numbering and so forth. But here's our coffee. The hoop is set to a 100 by 100 because I just pulled it up over here under the hoop button. You'll notice that we also have an overlap of just under one inch, and the overlap refers to this area right in here. It's between the design and the edge of the embroidery field. 
we also have a margin. Um, I beg your pardon. The margin is that distance between the embroidery field. The overlap is this distance right here, that 0.98. We have, by default, the add alignment is checked. We're going to leave that. And no, we don't want to rotate the design, so we leave the check mark out. You see that we have two hoopings, this one by one and one by two. To see what's actually going to stitch in each of the hoopings, we come over to Split Preview. I'll click on it once, and what it does is it allows us to see what the first hooping will stitch out. And right here at this red mark, you can see that that's uh, basically where that design is going to be split, or very close to it. If I click down here in the lower part, I see the second hooping is the full coffee cup, but what's nice about this, if I come back over here, the coffee itself and the latte or cream foam is all going to be in the one hoop, so I won't have any split stitches at that point. I happen to like where this design is going to split, so I will do a save. Now something to point out to you, we are in the split preview. If I click off of that, I see my full design again, but notice that the save button is no longer available to me. You need to be in split preview for save to be active. We'll go ahead and click on save, and what I'm going to do here is make sure I'm in the proper folder, and I am not, so I'll use a drop down, go to my hard drive, come into the folder for this evening. This is where I want my folder to be, and we type in a name, I'll call that coffee latte, and go ahead and enter. And what happens is it automatically gives me the two files broken down into the C2S format and also a PDF. I'm going to come over here and turn on my preview pane. And when I do that, if I click on that first file, notice the 01 here and the 02 here. So this is our first file. Here are all the placement marks. We have corner marks and we have a solid line that goes across. That is the first stitch out. We'll click on the second one. Again, we have the solid line going across and a corner marking, and this is the second stitch out. So we can see what's going to be taken care of in each file. We also have a PDF file. Let's double click on that to see what's actually going to be given in this file, and I'll size this down here so you can see what we're doing. On page one, it gives us the full overall template. If I go to page two, this is the template of the first stitch out, again with the marks there. If I go to the third page, it gives me the color analysis for the first stitch out. I then have a template of the second stitch out. And finally, the color analysis for that second stitch out. So that PDF is automatically created and helps with the templates already. We certain could send that to print. I'm going to go and minimize that. We're brought back into the folder that was created for those uh, coffee latte files. I'll close that, and we're brought back into our screen still in the split design, so I can go ahead and close, and we're in our original design that we sized. If I had done other things to this design, such as adding text or personalizing it in any way, I might want to save it. But because all I did was to size it differently, I'm going to close it and say no to saving it. I'm going to have a lot of open files this evening, so I'll try to clean up as I go along. But that's pretty cool, huh? We have our split designs and a PDF already for printing. Let's do another. We'll come over here to library again. I'll right click within display, go into my show contents, and the next design that I want is a couple clicks down. It is this red and black swirl, and we'll bring that to screen. I'll take a look at what that looks like in 3D. It's very pretty. And again, we are going to come back into our sequence and select all and uh, go ahead and group those. But I want to come into my transform so that I can size this design to be able to fit in a 5x7. I'm going to make the height 7. 
And what that does, because I have our maintain aspect ratio still on, it bumps that width out, and now I'm too large for a 5 by 7 hoop. But if that's the hoop that I have to work with on my machine, then I can go in, back up here to our split design, click on that tool, and whoa, we see quite a bit of hoopings in this one, but we're not going to get nervous about that because right down here, we still have the hoop set for a 100 by 100. Let's go get our 5 by 7 hoop, and that is the 130 by 180. That looks much better, and now I only have two hoopings. And the first thing that I always do is take a look to see how this split automatically. And I can see that I've got some stops uh, or some starts, actually, on these beginning parts of a swirl. If I were to click over here, I know that I'm going to have to line those and be dead on accurate when I line them, but I also have some goofy stitching going on over here. So what I can do, and again, I'll come back over here, because this is the situation right here in the center that I want to try to alleviate. This red line, this first vertical red line, is going to be the split marker. It's not perfect, but it gives me um, an eyeball of where I might want to move to my design for the split to happen. And what's very wonderful about this particular tool is we have control over the split. I can click on that. You see I have a hand with my mouse, and I can move that design to the left or to the right, and what I'm trying to do here, remember our red line, first vertical, I'm trying to get all of my starts of these swirls on the right side of that. So I'm going to click and drag over just a little bit, and I see I'm still within that break. So again, just a little bit more, and I now see that I have my red line to take care of that split right there. Let's take a look at that is indeed what I want. I just have a little couple dots here, but it did take care of this problem here. So I'm going to pick that up and move it over just a hair, go back into my split, and now I am happy with what I have. All of those are going to start in my second hooping, and this stitching situation has been fixed. And if I look over here, everything looks lovely for this particular hooping. So I actually have made that uh, split very easy for me to align when the time comes in the actual hooping procedure. So again, I would come down here to save. I'm brought into the folder. I'm going to call it my red swirls. Oops, if I can spell it properly. Okay. Enter for that to save. I have my individual files and the PDF again. And here on these individuals, you can see all of those alignment marks have been added. I'll go ahead and close that. We'll close here. And once again, because I did nothing differently to this design other than size, I'm going to close it. I don't really have to save it for any reason. I have another one to show you. Um, what we're doing here is going up a little bit more advanced, each of the designs. So we'll come into Library again, right-click, Show Contents, and I'm looking for these double red flowers right here. So I'll go ahead and double-click to bring it to screen, back into Sequence, select All Items, come up here to Group, and then I want to come over here to Transform. And again, I'd like this to be in the 5 by 7 hoop, so I'm going to make the height be a 5.5. I'll apply that. I like my 3D on to see the pretty designs. I'll go ahead and zoom back out so we can see all of that. So now I know that this design is going to be outside my 5 by 7 hoop, but I'll come up here to Split Design. The hoop I need is already selected with my 130 by 180. Notice, too, that when we have a larger hoop selected, the overlap becomes larger. Remember, in our 4 by 4, it was just under an inch. So it gives us a little bit more wiggle room when we have a larger hoop. The first thing I do is take a look at the splits. And I like the way the flower has split 
but I'm not really thrilled about this leaf right here because I'm going to have to be um, very accurate when I do my alignment. And then also, I see just one leftover outline stitch and then some um, accents right in here. So let me play with this and see if I can get a better split for myself. Once again, I'm going to click and drag. And what I'm looking at when I let go is I'm trying to get both of these leaves down here all in one hooping. And I can see I'm still not there yet, so I'll drag just a little bit and I'm over. I'll take a look at the split preview and I'm happy with these two leaves, but not thrilled with the way I've split this one. So I'll come back out, pick it up, and move it over. I can go all the way over to the rightmost edge of this if I need to. So now once again, a split preview. I like the look of this. And I come over here and all of this flower is going to stitch in one. And really my only alignment will be right here and that will be easy for me to do. So once again, I played until I was happy. I can do a save and I would call that red flowers and go ahead and save both of those designs, our PDF, and so forth. So you see that the lines that are given in this bigger hoop um, are both vertical and horizontal. I'll close that. Now, I'm just showing you right now how to use our split designs. We are going to see how to hoop these designs, but I want you to be very comfortable with this tool before I show you the actual stitch out process. So, we'll go ahead and close that. I know I don't need to say that, so I'll say no to save. And we're going to do another in which we create our own large design. So once again, I'm going to right-click Show Contents, and I'm going to go down and get my baby buggy. I'll go all the way up here to the top and click once. And I'm looking right here at the left for my baby buggy. Double-click it, bring it to screen. I'll drop this zoom back down to about 75%. And I'm not going to alter the size of this design, but what I do want to do is select all items and come up here to group them. And then I'm going to bring you back to the tool, the circle template. We played with this circle template back in March of 2015 with Template Talk. So if you want to revisit that webinar for a little bit of review on these templates, go right ahead. It was a fun one for me to do. But here, we click on Circle Templates, and this baby buggy starts to go around in a circle. Now, my thought here was maybe we could create a baby buggy clock um, for your next baby shower. Or if you don't want to turn it into a clock, we certainly could put a baby's name in the middle. But right now, it looks like the baby would actually fall out of that carriage. So we're, we'll take a look at some of these defaults. The circle size is set for a 200 by 200, which is our 8 by 8 hoop. The repeats are 8, angle at 45, scale at 100. But what really I want to change right away is this auto-rotate. If we remove the check mark and apply, this looks much better for a more appropriate buggy for our baby, a little safer anyway. And the other thing I want to draw your attention to, do you see how close the wheel is to the bonnet of the buggy here and here? And I want to spread that out just a little bit, so I'm going to come over to scale and instead of 100%, I'll drop it down just a little bit to 90. And do you see what it has given me now? I have a little bit more wiggle room between those two wheels, and I'm happier with that placement. I'll go ahead and do an OK. When it renders on screen, I can see up here with my status that this is way outside my 8x8 eight eight hoop. So we need to split this. Let's go into our split design. I'm still in my 5 by 7, so I'll come down with my drop down arrow and choose my 200 by 200, which is 8 by 8. And you can see that even in that large of a hoop, I have four hoopings for this baby buggy clock. If I do my split previews, I see the first one, and I can see that this buggy is going to have to be split in half, and the outline and the wheels are not part of this. 
If I look at the second, there's the other portion of the buggy. Again, no outliner wheels. The bottom, the, four, the uh, third hooping would be the outline, and then also with this last hooping would be the outline. So I have some very tricky alignment situations in this clock. I'm going to try and fix it. So we'll come out of split preview. Remember this red line right here is the um, suggestion for the split. So I'm going to pick up the design and move it over towards the right so that these buggies are on the other side of this red line. They're on the right side and they're whole to that. Now, I had the situation where these two buggies are going to be split um, precariously. So I'll click up, I'll uh, click on this design and drag up. And what I'm trying to do is to get these two buggies to clear this uppermost horizontal line so that this stays in the hooping. I actually can drag that over just a little bit more to that side. Now let's take a look and see the hoops. If, if I do a split, this is the bottom one. I'm okay with that. It's a whole buggy. I have two entire buggies, three entire buggies, and two entire buggies. So by moving it both up and to the right, I have had control over where this split will happen, and I've made it much easier for myself to do the alignment. I don't have to make uh, worry about an outline on something that has already stitched. So I'm going to save this and call it Baby Buggy. And we'll save it, and there are all of our designs, and you can see each one has both a vertical and horizontal placement line as we look at each one, and of course we have the PDF. So for the moment, we'll come back out of that design, close it, and because this is something that I did create, I am going to save this design in my working C2S format. I'm going to call it Baby Buggy. I could call it Baby Buggy Clock, but I already have that named. And um, actually, I want to put it in this particular folder and save it. And now if I need to, I can come back to that. OK. Um, before we look at the stitch out process, now that we've had a chance to play with this split design, we'll stop for a moment and ask uh, Dory, do we happen to have any questions at this time about the split designs? Yes. Is there a way, and I'm uh, hoping that going forward we're going to talk about marking these baby buggies? We are. Yes, in, in the actual designs themselves. In fact, if I were to open them, let's go into our baby buggy folder. There's all, all four of them. I'll do a control A to select and I'm going to open each one of them. And these designs themselves come with this placement line. This is a basting stitch, and it's going to stitch a vertical, a vertical line and a horizontal line wherever you see these two black marks. And if I can have you look over here into sequence view, you'll see it's the very first stitch out. That's the fourth file. The third file is the same. But notice the placement of these marks are um, where they should be for us to align this buggy with the rest in the circle. And again, here is our second file. Again, those three buggies, and we have a vertical um, and horizontal placement, and then there's our first. So they are in the file. They are basting stitches. And you'll see after a little bit here how I would actually use them in the hooping process. In fact, that's way, where we're headed right now. And to do that, I'm going to pull up a clean screen once more into my library, and I'm going to look for the sunset. Now, another way that we can search files here, you very often see me click within this bar because I've played with it so often I know where to go for it. But if you don't and you have the number of the file you wish, my number is 90072, and I hit my Enter, and it automatically finds this sunset design. So that's another way that you can locate it. I double-click it, bring it to screen. I'll turn it on and drop it back just a little bit here so we can see what it looks like. I'll come back into Sequence, All Items, Group. And then I am going to size this sunset 
so that we have to split it in a 4x4 four four hoop. And I'll make that uh, width, I'm going to make that width a, <coughs> excuse me, a 4 by 7 5 and apply it. And then we'll come up here to our split design tool. Obviously, no split is required here because we still have our 8 by 8 or 200 by 200 millimeter hoop chosen. We'll do a drop down. I'm going back up to the top to find my 100 by 100. And you see the split that has occurred. I am going to take a quick, quick peek. I'm happy with the way this is working. I have um, full rays of sunshine as in each individual hoop. The only place I'm going to have to align it is right there. In this case, I'm going to leave it like this so you can see how I went about doing it. I will save it. I need to come up to our main folder, call it Sunset, save it, and I have those two individual files and, of course, my uh, PDF file. All right, we'll close out of here, come close out of here, and again, I am going to close this sunset. We're going to have a lot of uh, designs open here in a moment. And what I'd like to show you first on screen is how those placement marks work. So I'll go in back into my sunset, and I'm going to open both of those designs first and second. We'll go into our sunset, the first design, and drop down just a little bit here so you can see it better. And we know that we're going to be using the 4x4 four four hoop, so let's pull that up so you can see that uh, here the placement lines fill out that hoop. Because we chose a 4x4, four four, these corner markings are in the outermost region of the embroidery field for this 4x4, four four, and also the vertical alignment is filling up the entire space of that 4x4. Four four. So here would be our first stitch out. I'm going to select all of them and pretend that we are now getting ready for our second hooping. So with this being my fabric, the idea behind it is that you need some of this first stitched design to be within the embroidery field here. And then when we, uh, I'll go get my second sun set, and first I'm going to group it, I'll do, do a copy, and we'll go back into that screen and pretend now that we are bringing the second stitch out onto our machine. What has to happen is that black line of this design needs to align with the black line of the first stitch out. And I can see I'm off just a little bit here. So I'll do a control nudge with my control side arrow. I'm not going anywhere here. Oops. Select it and nudge it over just a little bit. Phooey, I thought I did a group on all of that, so we'll go ahead and group that line. This might not work to show you. Okay, but the idea is that we want to align both of those black lines. Let's actually take a look at the stitch out itself. That might be easier for you to see what I did. I tried to show you what will happen on screen. But this is the actual stitch out, the first file. And yes, it does stitch that black line in a basting stitch also the corner is basted. Then you would prepare the hoop for the second stitch out. This would be adhesive stabilizer. If you have a keen eye, you can see that truly it is a cutaway. And I have this done for travel purposes when I teach this. But you would have an adhesive stabilizer with a scored area. And this area right in here would be sticky. And on that stabilizer, of the second design, you would stitch this black line onto the stabilizer. Now at this point, there's two options. You could do this option where you take a straight pin and you put the straight pin in the lowest point of that black alignment line, and then you align that straight pin with the bottommost 
point of the alignment line on the stabilizer. You would do the same with this pin at the top of the line and go underneath and making sure that that pin hits that black line. And then when your alignment is as it should be, you would then press that fabric down on that sticky stabilizer and then put your hoop in your machine and stitch out the second portion. Or you could do it this way. This is showing you one of my favorite tools that I own. It's the PAL 2. It's a perfect alignment laser by Dime. And what it does is it gives you perpendicular or crosshairs laser lights. Because I have this tool, what I would do instead is to align this black thread that is stitched out on my stabilizer. The top portion of that is going to be aligned with the PAL crosshairs, both at the top and the length of the vertical line. I then would lay my first hooping over the hoop, aligning that top point of the alignment line right at the crosshairs, which I know is in the exact position it should be over here on the hoop, and then press down the um, design itself, the fabric, onto that adhesive stabilizer and I would be ready to stitch. When I stitch out that second design, knowing that the alignment is perfect, uh, oops, I have a little, <laughs> forgot about this, I wanted to make sure that you understood what I was talking about, about the PAL. This is the one, uh, I actually own both of them. There's different reasons you might want to use the one that attaches to your cutting table or hooping station. And then this is the smaller one that will also, uh, it has batteries or it has a USB that you can plug right into your machine. But you can see the laser light here as well. Just very, very helpful. It's too bad Mother's Day is over because that would have been a wonderful gift for you for Mother's Day. But here we see the design itself stitched out and aligned, and it came out quite lovely. We'll move now to another design that we did. Remember, we did the coffee. And the line itself stitched out and where it broke that design. So this is the look of my first stitch out. I would remove this from the hoop. And remember we said that a portion of that design needs to be down in the embroidery field of your hoop. So that's what you're seeing right here. We can't ever put that black line all the way up here to the edge of the hoop because your needle can't go up there. That is not part of the embroidery field. What we do on our machine, and this depends on the type of machine, uh, you have. This is one way that you can go about it. Do you notice this green crosshairs? That green crosshair represents my needle drop or the first the needle position. And what I've done, I've gone into my trace feature on my machine and asked it to place the needle in the upper leftmost position of this second part, uh, second design. I know that that position is here on the alignment line because the alignment is uh, larger than the width of the coffee cup. Since the needle needs to be in that position, what I am trying to do now is get that needle to be um, in that position so that when I sink, it is right there on that line. You would use the jog or move keys on your machine if, you, if your needle drop wasn't exactly on the black line here on your hooped first design, then you could jog that so that it does hit that properly. Secondly, I would also uh, ask my trace feature to find the rightmost position, which of course is going to be over here at the right end of that alignment line, and I would sink my needle down into that position on that black line. And that's how this black line helps us align our designs in the hoop. Remember, this is a basting stitch. You can see the large stitches perhaps right there, and it's going to come out very easily. But this way, by doing both the left and right side of that alignment line, I also know that I have it straight horizontally. And then when we're finished, here is the design stitched, and it is very difficult to say, to uh, determine where we actually split that design and put it back together. Okay, Dory, we'll stop here and see if there's any questions on the procedure 
Oh, that is wonderful. By chance, do you have to only use a tacky or sticky stabilizer? Do you have the option of other stabilizers? If you, I'm going to back up and show you. Do you see where I actually have this first design hooped? But yet, when I did the um, sunset, <clears throat> I did need a tacky hoop because this was laid on top of the hoop. Uh, if you are stitching out, if you're using this method where you stitch the alignment out on the stabilizer, you can't then go back and hoop it because you'll move that alignment line. So the um, procedure, this particular procedure, finishes out. You could use a tearaway or cutaway with perhaps a temporary spray on this um, stabilizer, but there are some situations that you might have to take into consideration how large is the design, um, how much of it is solid fill, uh, is, it, is it something that you really want to hoop instead of just laying it on a temporary spray or adhesive stabilizer? But you do have those options. So if you don't have any adhesive but you have temporary spray, that would uh, perhaps work for you as well. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to come back in and I'm going to close out my sunshines without saving either one because those designs were correct the way they were. But I do want to show you a situation. We're not going to call it a problem. We're not going to call it anything like that. I'm going to show you a situation and show you how I might work with that situation. Okay, we just saw how that coffee cup stitched out. And you saw also, if I come back to... <coughs> I did. I thought I did open. Here's my first one. And remember with our hoop, we bring that to screen. We remember that these alignment lines make it fill up the entire hoop. All right. We will pretend that we have stitched this. I'm, it is already grouped. And remember that I told you you need to bring a portion of that design down into the embroidery field. All right. We'll go pick up our Second design, and this time I want to make sure that I it is grouped. All right, I'll do a copy, come over to my first stitch out. Again, this is pretend, and I'm going to drop it in the screen, and that is grouped. Now, if I come off of that, remember that it has this black line that is the width of this hoop and also has this bottom corner, which is the height of the hoop. So if I try to align this design as is, and I put that line up there aligning here, do you see that this corner is outside the hoop? And it's not going to let me do that on my machine. It's going to tell me to change to a larger hoop. Okay? If that makes sense to you, because this design is made to fill up that whole hoop, which means we have very little wiggle room. So what I would do is in my second hooping, and perhaps any third, fourth, fifth hooping, I come into this design, and I first need to ungroup it, and then I'm going to select this corner and delete it. Okay, I've removed that corner, but I've, I, can't, I definitely need this alignment mark, so I leave that as it is. I'll select everything again and group it, and I would come up to this design, and actually I'm going to do a center origin on that, and I would come in and save as, so that I could give it a different name. Notice I'm in the same folder with my first two, but I always add no corner. Okay, And let me show you what that does for us. If we go back to our original design, remember this is the one that has the corner. If I now do, I'm just going to do a file merge, and I'll bring in my no corner design. Do you see now that I have wiggle room as far as where I place that design in the hoop? 
I like that better. If I come up a little bit here so you can see it, I like the ability to have that wiggle room in the hoop in a vertical fashion so that I know that I hoop this design down into the hoop and I have all of this room down here since that corner is no longer a part of it. Now that's just me, but I do like that. Um, it just gives me a little bit more um, success, I think. So that's an option that you can have. The other option, of course, would be to use a larger hoop in the actual stitch out. If we set this to be a 4x4 um, and you have a 5x7, you could use a larger hoop, but in our particular situation here, that's kind of silly because we sized it larger to fit. Um, and we could have fit it in a 5x7 without the split. So that is one option that you have. We want to take a look at something else. We'll start with a clean screen. And actually, I'm going to go back to my coffee and uh, close each of those because we're, again, having a lot of things open. I come into a clean screen. Another project that requires multiple hoopings is a continuous border. So let's talk about the tool that lets us include alignment marks for a continuous border. And this time, I'm going to go up into our um, symbols, our tool right up here, use my arrow and ask to select it. I'm looking for a Scotty. These are in alphabetical order, so I'm just going to scroll down until I find my S's. And here's my little guy. And I'll click and drag, not real concerned at the moment how big I get him, because I'm going to select him come over here to transform, and I'm going to size him to be 1.25 in width, which gives me just about one inch in height. Now, because this is a continuous border, that means we have the same design uh, multiple times, whether we put this border on a napkin or the bottom of a t-shirt or wherever we might want to place that, uh, we need a duplicate. So he is selected. Let's go up and do a copy. I'm going to paste and drag the first copy over a little bit. I'll do another paste and do a third copy. And I'm not concerned right now about vertical or horizontal placement or the spacing between these because that's what's up next. There's a couple different ways that you could set this spacing, but I'm going to share with you my favorite. And that is to come up here to our artwork tool and I'll use the drop down and choose a rectangle. And I'm going to draw a rectangle about the space that I want between my two little dogs here. And with it selected, I'm going to change the color. I'll put it orange so that we can see it. And what I want to do here is to decide how much space to put between each Scotty. I'll select that artwork and come over here and see that's actually perfect because I, I did want it to be a quarter inch difference. So that's fine. And now we're going to use our spacer. So I'll zoom in just a little bit more so you can see what we're doing and pick up my second guy and move him over because this spacer I'm going to put at the nose of the first Scotty and then I'm going to drag the second one back so his tail butts up to my spacer. So now I have a quarter inch between those two. I'm going to select my spacer, copy, paste, and drag it here. And I'm going to paste it one more time because I'm going to put a spacer over here as well. And I'll explain why in just a moment. But as I come closer to these two guys, I can see that my spacer is right there on its nose, as it should be. So I'll click and drag my Scotty tail over to the edge. And then I'll scroll over and pick my last spacer and put that to his nose. We'll zoom out so you can see what we have. And the reason I have put this spacer over in this position, when you think of continuous border, these three little guys would be done on the first tooping, and then I would adjust my hoop, uh, the fabric in my hoop, and then these three guys would stitch again and again and again in a continuous border. 
if I don't put my spacer here, then this little guy's tail is going to abut this little guy's nose. And I rather that didn't happen because I want these to be spaced uh, the same all throughout the design. So I'm going to uh, zoom out just a little bit here so you can see what we have. And at this point, I would select all of the pieces of this design and then come up here. I could align it either at the top or the bottom, but I'm going to choose the top align button. And now all spacers, but more importantly, all puppies are spaced um, as they should be. All right, oops, and you know what else I think I'll do at the same time? I'll go ahead and do a right click and do a center origin so that this design is centered both vertically and horizontally. All right, now at this point we need to add our alignment marks. And earlier we were playing with our split design, but now we want to play with our placement marks. So we'll click on placement marks and you see all of the options that you have I'm going to choose one in each corner and OK that. And you see that's exactly what has happened. I have placed these down uh, top and bottom on either side. And now you also can see that how helpful this end spacer is being because it's giving me the placement marks where that spacing should occur. A couple other things that we want to do. I want to move the, um, the lower placement marks are down a bit because of the depth or the height, I guess, of my spacer. But I do want to take this upper space, uh, alignment mark and this one, and I'm going to hold up, down my shift control and use my up arrow key three times just to bring that up and away from my dogs. Again, I'm giving myself a little bit of wiggle room here with this placement. The other thing that I want to do is I'll select the first one and the, uh, I should say, both of the right ones. And I'm going to come over here and change the color so they stand out a bit. And I'm also going to take those two red arrows. And this is why I isolated them. I change the color so that I can take these two and come up here and do a move to front, which means they will stitch in the last position. I'm going to leave that artwork. All of those spacers are artwork, but that won't stitch out, and I'll just save that with the design. At this point, I'm going to select all, and I'll group that, and I would do a file, save as, and I'll come into the folder where it needs to be, and I'm going to call this Scotty Border. You can see I've already been playing. I'll call it 2 and enter. And then, of course, we know that that was just saved as our C2S. I would also need to go back and do a file, save as, and choose my particular machine format um, to be able to stitch it out on my machine. My baby lock machines um, require a PEZ format, so I'm just going to choose the 5 version and save it. And at this point, um, our design is ready to bring in, and let's take a look how that actually stitched out. When I stitched out the first one, I did rotate it on the machine, and this is the edge of that first stitch out. And again, we want to put part of that stitch out down into the embroidery field. We cannot put those two arrows right up here next to the frame because I can't get to that. That's outside of the embroidery field. I have another favorite tool right here, and this is called the Snap Hoop Monster, and it's the one with the very strong magnets. And I bring this here to show you that on my bottom frame, I have marked the center points on all sides, and once again, I'm using that PAL to set my hoop. Um, my crosshairs are set at the center points because when I lay this fabric over that frame, the bottom frame, I can't see it. So this alignment allows me to then help place that fabric in at a straight position and also to make sure I'm down into my embroidery field. In our next situation, once again, here is the design. 
this design is repeated. We don't have a first design and a second design like we did with the coffee cup. And I'm going to ask it to go to the uppermost right portion. Now, let me explain to you what you're seeing. This is the design, and those two black arrows stitch out first. These two red arrows stitch out last. If I rehoop my fabric, and you see I have done that right here, and I ask the machine to go to the uppermost right position, I'm asking it to go to the first stitch out here on this black arrow. However, I actually am going to align it with the red arrow at the bottom of the first stitch out. And you can see that when I first brought it in, I was off just a little bit, so with a bit of jogging with my move key, I was able to move it so that the needle sinks right into the point of that arrow. And again, I do it to the uppermost left here, and I sink my needle, and it is exactly in that position, and I know that this design is also horizontally straight, and I would then move to finish the second border, that design is going to start right here. You can actually skip past those two black arrows if you want to. You don't have to stitch them out. If you do, they're going to align right on top of this. All of this is basting stitch, so it's very easy to pull out. And then your Scotty would be done for your second hooping. You would do the same for your third hooping, your fourth hooping, however long you wanted that continuous border to uh, go across your item. Okay, Dory, we'll stop there. Do we have any questions? Whoa, yes we do. Um, our, fr up. our friend Debbie would like to know, can you go and use any of the other tools that we some of our companies have offered us, such as the, um, what is it called, the Endless Hoop, which is... Um, a hoop that allows you to do a border and just move the fabric and slide it through and slide it through. Would this also Would, work? Yes, it does. I actually had a continuous hoop border um, with one of my earlier baby locks. You still want to set your design up in just this fashion. The difference between the endless hoop is that your hoop stays on the machine and you simply slide the fabric back up. Now, because you don't have, you could use your, uh, your small pal if you had it for the alignment on the hoop, because one of the things with that continuous hoop, see this right here? Remember, we have to have some of the previous design down into the embroidery field. Sometimes people want to make that continuous border fill up that hoop. I would guard against doing that because if this Scotty, if I had added two or three more Scotties and it went from this edge to that edge, you can see where I do not have any wiggle room when I go to align that needle drop into those arrows. Uh, I have to be dead on. Got so it. So you don't, you don't want to fill up your hoop. Even if it means one or two additional hoopings, I think it's well worth it rather than filling up that hoop. With your endless hoop, this hoop that, I, that you see right here, this uh, luster hoop, this actually has, would have a spring loaded over here that you click and the hoop comes up, the upper frame lifts up, you move your fabric uh, down into the hoop and and then you snap that hoop back into place, but you still want to do the jogging if necessary and perhaps your trace tool to get that needle drop right in that exact position. The beauty of those continuous hoops is the fact that you don't have to take, uh, keep taking your hoop off and on your machine. You yeah. actually can do that rehooping right there at the machine. So the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> that was now, a long answer. Very short. That's okay. I, I got it, though. Um, our friend Sandra asked, if the stitch out of the dogs are touching, in the stitch out, the dogs are touching, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good, Sandra, because this is what I did, and this is what I went back and did because it was a better idea. So good of you to be so 
observant to notice that this design really is not the one I showed you on screen. So see, even I learn continuously. <laughs> All right. And and question is, why didn't you use the repeat tool? You could have. If you are having them touch like this, yes. um, you, you absolutely could have. I'm, I'm just a, a copy-paste kind of girl, and I, um, I could have done that repeat. Now, are you talking about the repeat here in the software, Sandra, or are you talking about the repeat when you set a continuous border? Because some of our machines will allow us to set a continuous border right here on our screen. And there is a repeat key for that, which takes these three and simply repeats it to a, another set of three and so forth. So um, not sure which repeat you're talking about, but if in you're talking software. about in the software, okay, we certainly could use the repeat. Okay. I'm, I'm just a copy-paste. Yep. Okay. So, so is judge, a judgment call? It is indeed, yes. And that's why I try to preface some things with there's more than one way to do this, but this is the way that I choose to do or I like to do. So uh, many times there's no right or wrong to a particular way. Super. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have one other thing. Now that we have played with this idea of our placement marks, I want to go back and readdress this baby buggy issue and give you another hint. And again, this is my hint and you can try it. If you like it, great. If you prefer the other way, that's absolutely fine as well. But remember in this baby buggy, every one of these four files has both a vertical and horizontal line that fills up the hoop. Remember if I were to go get my 200, uh, 200 by 200 and bring that to screen, I have no wiggle room in that design. Okay, that vertical line fills up the hoop here and the horizontal fills it up here. Which means I have to be dead on in my alignment, in my placement of that second hooping, the third, and so forth. So let me show you something that I came up with and you can see if you like it. I'm going back to this placement marks right here. And because this particular perpendicular matches this perpendicular button right here at the placement. I'm going to only choose that. And the other thing I did to make it easy to stand out is I came to my plus here on add a color. I didn't like the green. I clicked that and made it a red and simply right clicked on that red to change that perpendicular to red so I could see it. I'm going to turn on the 3D. It's a little thicker for you. And then what I did is I came down here and put that perpendicular on this where these two lines intersect. Let's really zoom in on that so you can see where I am. And I played with that perpendicular until I got it just exactly right on the perpendicular that is already there. Because really that's what those two lines are showing us. I'll zoom back out. And once I have that red mark there, I went in and chose, I need to ungroup it here, and I chose the vertical line and deleted that, and I did the horizontal and deleted that, and you see I'm still left with the alignment mark that I needed right here on this particular hooping. I then did a file, save as, and I'll go back into my baby buggy because I try to keep them all together. I used the same name but added no corner. Saved it and again I would repeat that to do my file save as and save it into my PES machine format. But what that allows me to do is I have more wiggle room when I go to add this design to the first stitched out design. I still leave this first file as is with the full per perpendicular because it doesn't matter. This is going to fill up the whole hoop. This is the first hooping and I don't have to be um, right within or on top of something that's already there. We'll take a look at our stitch outs. And in doing so, I actually did that then for all of the files. Here I have the first stitch out resting here and here is the second file on screen that I've retrieved and right there you see my red perpendicular. 
Now I'm going to zoom in to show you something here because there is one slight thought that you have to keep in mind. You see the green is the needle penetration, yet the perpendicular line is right there. So what I would need to do on my machine is use my advance key for the needle and I just need to advance it three stitches so that the first, the needle drop will be right there at the perpendicular, if that makes sense to you. And then this is what I get. This is what I'm after. I'll go ahead and zoom back out here. This is what I'm after to get my needle drop for this second design right on those crosshairs. This is the first stitch out, the two buggies. You see that I have re-hooped it right here. You can see part of the buggy there. Here I have placed it so that that uh, crosshairs black alignment lines are within the field for embroidery. And then I advance, I use my um, trace feature to get that needle into the right position, advance just a couple, and then I can use it. And again, what that allows me to do is to have much more wiggle room. I can move that design up and down in my 8x8, eight eight, but if I have this full line here on this second design, I have to be dead on when I hoop that second hooping. So that's something that I have done and that I um, will continue to do on multiple hoopings like this. You can see that I finished the second design right here, fully stitched the alignment on that red marker, and actually you can advance, you don't have to stitch that red marker, it's just used for alignment. And here I'm showing you for my third one. I went a little different. Um, and again, this shows you the options you have. This is the printed template of the third stitch out. And here I've cut it in such a way that my red perpendicular is going to be easy for me to see. So I brought that red perpendicular and placed it on the black stitch out. Remember, this is the original first design, and I'm setting it up now to hoop this third one. And I've placed it in such a way, and then what I did is I slid a target sticker. I actually folded this template in half and slid a target sticker that is aligned vertically and horizontally and then hooped it. And the other beauty of this is that I did not have to use an 8x8 hoop because this third design fits in a rotated 5x7. So now that I have used my crosshairs um, on my pal, I aligned it like I did before and then laid my fabric aligning the target sticker with the PAL laser lights right here and then also helped by placing the top frame making sure that that was in center as well. So that third hooping became even easier because it was a 5 by 7 lots of wiggle room and all I needed to do in, in this one was bring in the design centered into the design. And I ended up doing that for the last uh, stitch out as well. So. Um, perhaps you might like this idea in removing some of those alignment marks. They're wonderful and they do help and they are needed, but we have other ways that we can use them as well. Ah, wonderful options. Very good. Um, are there any final questions, Dory? No, ma'am, there are not. Okay. All right, there are other ways to split designs. We could use the slice tool if appropriate, or the brand new lasso tool that is in the update to remove parts of a design. But tonight's designs were given the placement marks for helping in alignment of multiple hoopings. So as you try for yourself what we've covered tonight, be sure to pick an easy one to start with to learn the procedure. And then you can work up doing more advanced projects such as the design with the four hoopings and a bit more stitch proportions and so forth. That's what I did to learn these great tools. So I give a, a great big thank you to the Inspiration Software Programmers. I do want to show you one last picture to leave you with, that when we talk about split designs, it does not always have to be for larger purposes. This little Uncle Sam comes as one of your free designs in that same 
uh, folder we were in, our free designs, and this time I split him for creative reasons, not necessarily for um, a larger hoop situation. This is very small, it's a 4x4 four four canvas, and I have him split, and in that opening right there I simply um, glued and wrapped a ribbon around the canvas, and you can see that it can be used a little bit more creatively as well. To give you a uh, heads up, I had so much fun with doing this type of split that I am um, writing up an article that, and we'll post it for the magazine, to do some fun splits like this in a more creative fashion. Um, so look for that in the future. But I do thank you all for joining me this evening, and thank you for all our, our technical support people that are with us tonight, and I will say good night. <laughs>